Now here's my biggest question. I would love, I would absolutely love for somebody to answer this to me in the comment section. What in the crap is going on with Jimbo Fisher and Texas A&M and these recruits? You can't sit up here and tell me this isn't weird. College football is currently in one of the weirdest states I've ever seen it in during any offseason. What do I mean by that? What am I talking about? Well, first things first, we got this entire crap show going at Colorado. We'll talk about that later tonight. We got all these quarterback battles going on. I can't remember the last time there was this many quarterback battles going on at top schools in the country. And then we got this going on at Texas A&M. The past couple of weeks has been chaotic to say the least, and I don't think it's going to slow down anytime soon. There's just a ton of stuff going on. And remember a couple of days ago when we talked about the player at Texas A&M that's being forced out? Well, now apparently and allegedly, he's coming back. Very weird, right? Because he came out and stated, hey, they want me to leave. So what does he do? He enters a portal, and then a couple days later, he's back. A lot of people are speculating that money may have something to do with it. Trust me, we're going to talk all about it. But also, we got to talk about how CJ Stroud is no longer a top five guaranteed pick. A lot of the new reports coming out are stating that he's no longer even a lock to be a top seven pick, which is crazy. Why is it crazy? Because leading up to the draft, everybody said, hey, he could potentially be the first pick, but if he's not the first, he'll be second or third. But now he's not even going to be top seven? I can't speak for you, but I can speak for myself, and I find that rather intriguing. We're going to check that out, but also, we're going to take a look at some of these Oklahoma comments that y'all left on the previous video. I asked you guys, I asked Oklahoma fans, what in the crap is going on there, and we got some responses. You're not going to want to miss these. Are they good responses? Well, I'll let you guys be the judge of that in the comments. Has Oklahoma actually improved on defense? Are they a legit contender? We're going to talk about it. It goes without being said. It's going to be another jam-packed video. Get your snag, get your popcorn ready. As always, we're on the road at 300K. If you like college football content, consider subscribing. It's 100% free. You can always unsubscribe later. All right, Matt, blah, blah, blah. Should I grab up? Without further ado, let's get into it. You know what? I was going to start out with the Oklahoma topic, but let's talk about CJ Stroud first. Get it out the way. I do want to speak on this, but I don't want to talk about it too much. As we all know, the NFL draft, it's coming up. I believe it's on Thursday, the 27th. That's only a couple days. Leading up to the draft, everybody's like, okay, Bryce Young, CJ Stroud, they're QB1, QB2. But just like Lee Corso says, not so fast, my friend. I've seen this floating around the past couple of weeks that Will Levis and Anthony Richardson might get selected before CJ Stroud. Do I agree with that? No, not necessarily, but that's a different conversation for a different day. Here's what we're going to talk about. The reports have came out that CJ Stroud is reportedly no longer a quote-unquote surefire top five selection. NBC Sports Peter King said he believes Stroud isn't even a lock to go within the top seven picks. Like most people out there, including myself, you're probably sitting there going, okay, what in the crap happened? He was supposed to be a top three pick. Well, here's what happened. Remember that S2 condition test we've been talking about? Well, he did so bad on it, some NFL executives are labeling him as a bust. And another NFL executive said he's never had someone grade that low on a test and play well. I told you guys this either yesterday or the day before. I'm going to say it again. Do I personally care about this test a lot? Do I care about it enough not to take them? No. I'm not going to say the test doesn't matter, but its significance to me is very, 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 very little. Me personally, I have CJ Stroud as QB2, and I'm going to leave it at that. I just don't have too much to say about it. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Let me know your thoughts on that down below. Moving along here to our second topic. Yesterday, we talked about Oklahoma, the football team, and I still told you guys, hey, the defense isn't that great. I think they're trash. And exactly like I expected, Oklahoma fans weren't too happy to hear that, and I get it. For those of you that didn't watch the spring game, you're going to see this picture right here and go, what in the crap was going on? 60 to 55 in the second quarter? I know it threw me off as well, but when I watched the game, they did some weird scoring system, and I'll pop up how they did it right here. I don't understand it. I don't know why all these teams try to do these new formats, but it is what it is. And if you actually want to break this down, the defense did do pretty good in that game. Taking it a step even farther, the defense won the game. But here's a comment from Rob that I would like to address. Let's check it out. Hey Matt, always enjoy when you bring up Oklahoma, even if it isn't necessarily positive. This might be a little long, but I attended the game and I gotta say defensively, they looked pretty dang good. As someone that has followed this team for 20 years now, we've gotten used to a certain kind of athlete on defense during the rally years and what I saw in that field were not those type of athletes. These were the kind of guys that used to push Oklahoma around in the playoffs. This is a complete rebuild, down to the studs. Venables has had a top 5 or top 10 defense every year for the last decade and obviously has connections and pull all over the country and lands incredible recruits. But the sideline to sideline speed was way faster. Guys weren't thinking as much. They were in the right spots. I couldn't believe how many new people made 
made this team look completely different. The transfer portal combined with elite high school recruiting is a heck of a tool when done right, but yes, there was a ton that sat out. The O-line really banged up as well. The scoring system was wonky, but they actually had to abandon it in the second half because the defense was fixing to run away with it. To be honest, I think you're the first person to have a negative opinion about the defense performance yesterday, but then again, most of the other big football channels haven't put videos out yet, so we shall see. At least us that follow the program religiously feel a lot better after yesterday. We still need some wide receivers though, and they had 10 five stars, ton of four stars, something crazy, almost like 100 athletes visiting. There's a lot of momentum at Oklahoma right now. It's boiling, and it feels like the top is fixing to pop off. As always, thanks for the discussion, Matt. I know that was long and lengthy, but I did want to read it out. And I also saw many other comments from people saying, yo, Matt, what are you talking about? I thought the defense did good. And I see where y'all are coming from, but I think you missed my point in that video. And maybe I didn't make it clear. Maybe it's my fault. Here's what I am going to do, though. I'll make it clear right now. I didn't care how good the defense would have played in that spring game. I'm still labeling them as trash. Why's that? Because I'm going off of what I saw last year. And saying it was trash last year would be sugarcoating it. Currently, as to where it stands, I think Oklahoma has a great offense and a terrible defense. And my opinion will not change until the regular season starts. Yet again, let me make this clear. No matter how good the defense would have played in the spring game, I'm not changing my opinion on them. You want me to give Oklahoma's defense some credit? You gotta go out there next year and get a couple of stops. I'm not gonna watch one spring game where they look decent, where they look okay and go, okay, yeah, Brent Venables, he's fixed the defense. They're ready to go. No, I'm not doing that. Your defense has gotta look good against these these big 12 teams and then we can have a serious conversation but for now Oklahoma is a great offensive team terrible defensive team and I'll leave it at that to give you another example it's the same thing with USC I don't care how USC's defense looks in the spring game. I'm still labeling them as trash based off of what I saw last year. Same thing for Auburn. That Auburn football team right now is mediocre at best. I'm not changing my opinion on them. They're mediocre at best until they prove it in the season. I don't take spring games seriously and I don't overreact to them. And I know what a lot of you are going to say, well, Matt, you freaked out after the Alabama one and that's an exception. I only freaked out about the Alabama spring game because our quarterbacks play like dog crap and our wide receivers couldn't catch I don't know. They couldn't catch anything. I don't know what happened. That's different. I was just complaining about the wide receivers and quarterbacks. So if it makes you feel any better, Oklahoma fans, my opinion on y'all, it was made up before the spring game. It's hard for me to change my opinion too much when you're scrimmaging. I will say this, though, and I know I know, know y'all are ready to get into the main topic. Do I personally believe that Brent Venables can turn Oklahoma around? Do I believe he can turn them into one of the best defensive teams in the country? Yes, I do. But, and I have a big but, I gotta see it to believe it. Brent Venables last year made me look like an absolute fool because I said, hey, he's gonna have one of the best defenses in the Big 12. I believe in him so much. I said he was the greatest hire in the offseason and he made me look dumb. Therefore, yes, I am a little skittish to believe in his scheme quite just yet. I hope I clarified on some things. But now finally, moving on to the main topic of the main encore, the main reason you clicked onto this video, we gotta talk about what's going on at College Station. Okay, we already talked about this. You should be familiar with it. It was only a couple days ago. Texas A&M had a cornerback who goes by the name of Bobby Taylor. Well, out of nowhere, news comes out that Bobby Taylor, he's entering the transfer portal. No big deal, right? No reason to talk about it. Well, he goes on Instagram and says, don't think I wanted to leave. That's where this conversation sparked up because he basically insinuated they forced him out. And why it was so weird is because he was on Twitter only a couple days before saying, hey, I'm happy here, it's awesome here, let's have this kid come on a visit. Then 24 hours later, he's going, yep, I gotta enter the portal, they're making me leave. Very odd situation, we talked all about that. He's in the portal, but guess what? About a day ago, he announces, yeah, I'm coming back to A&M. Now here's my biggest question, I would love, I would absolutely love for somebody to answer this to me in the comment section. What in the crap is going on with Jimbo Fisher and Texas A&M and these recruits? You can't sit up here and tell me this isn't weird. A kid is extremely happy there. A day later, he announces he's being forced to enter the transfer portal. Then two days later, he announces he's coming back. What's going on? Check this comment out. This is from Hayden talking about Bobby Taylor and A&M, and he has some insight because he goes there. Hayden stated, Hey Matt, love the videos. As someone who is currently a student at Texas A&M and tries to stay in the loop with everything going on with the team, I felt like Bobby Taylor may have been buried on the depth chart for cornerbacks. He was a guy who was locked into playing with A&M since committing. Heck, he even recruited a couple players to join him in the 2022 class. I just feel like he wanted to have playing time at the position and felt like he couldn't get any playing time due to being under multiple cornerbacks on the depth chart that joined A&M via the transfer portal. Very great comment. Thank you for the insight, by the way. And that's what everybody said on that video. Well, here's my question on all this. If that's true, 
why is he coming back? When I say that, I'm not trying to be sarcastic or anything like that. It is a genuine question. Something weird is going on there. I don't know if it's money related. I don't know what it is. I'm just going to label it as this. It's weird. It's strange. It's odd. Because the reasons that everybody stated on that video from people at AM doesn't even add up anymore. If he entered the portal because of playing time, well, he wouldn't have came back, right? The only logical thing I can think of is this has got to be a money situation. Am I crazy for saying that? I don't know another scenario where this adds up or makes sense. This has to be a money situation. The check didn't clear. He said, all right, y'all ain't going to pay me. I'm entering the portal. And then two days later, the check cleared or they was like, hey, we'll pay you, man. Just come back and he's back. Yet again, I'm not trying to be a smart aleck about this. That is the only thing that makes sense to me. I could be wrong, though. And regardless of it, it doesn't matter. He's back, and it is a big, I guess you could say, re-pickup for A&M. I think Bobby Taylor is a good cornerback, and I think he could succeed at A&M and maybe in the NFL one day. The greatest part about this channel, though, is we have a big community of college football fans, and I know my A&M fans will let me know in the comments. So yet again, I'm asking, let me know. We are posting another video. Yes, that is right. You heard me correctly. We are posting another video tonight, so stay tuned. I got a lot to work on. I got to get this video up. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you later. Let me know your thoughts down below. But, uh,